back in the shop with Christy. Jason Christy, we are late spring now. We're gonna cover his top 10 late spring choices that are must have in your boat when you're fishing. Late spring's a little bit different because you got water temperature variations depending on where, you at where you're at regionally. So I'm gonna let him break his top five down right now and then we might venture into the other five <laughs> making up that 10. Cause I know he wants to. So Jason, take it away, bud. A lot of things going on in this time frame. Uh, early spring, you're predominantly pre-spawn. Late spring, there's, I mean, 55 to 70 degree water temperature. You have fish that are still late pre-spawn, spawners, and then the post-spawners, yeah. which are very, very important. So a wide range, uh, top five here. You know, in the spring pre-spawn, you're never gonna see uh, covert not being my top five. I can just cover a lot of water. Um, I'm gonna look for stain water with that. You know, and just um, just go down the bank. I mean, anything that you see, I'm gonna throw by, slow roll it. That bait was in early spring. Three quarter ounce. Three quarter ounce, blade size difference, but we're still in Colorado, why? Yeah, just the dirtier water. I like, uh, you know, a single spin prior to the spawn. There's just something about that thump, thump, Thump that I feel like gets a lot of bites. Once they start spawning, and after the spawn, post spawn, I'm gonna go to a tandem collar at an okay. or a willow leaf. Just okay. move the bait a little bit faster. Okay. Uh, number two, War Eagle Gia Jigsu. You know this bait's gonna be in the top ten a lot of the time just because it's a jig. You know I can put it, you know anywhere and feel like I can get a bite and catch a big ones. Um, you know this bait could easily be number one. The Yum Dinger, Green Pumpkin, Purple. So many things that you can do with this. Uh, these fish start spawning. This is a bait that has no action really to speak of, but they love it. I mean, it's, you know, I can Texas rig it. I can throw it uh, with or without a weight. There's just a lot of things that I can do with it. And the cool thing is they just eat it. From so that early spring, what's your number one way to rig that bait? I would say flipping it. You know, I, we're, we're getting ready to go to Florida. Um, I'd say a quarter ounce to a three eighths ounce and just flipping it around lily pads, uh, cattails, beds, you know, all different kinds of things. Okay. But you move, you know, a lot of guys throw it just with a hook, nothing else, just let it slowly. And that will really, really catch them too. Uh, number three, speed in. Um, these two kind of go to hand in hand. Just baits that I can cover water. Dirtier water, I'm probably gonna be throwing the spinner bait. I get in some of that clearer water, I can pick up the speed in. This is harvest moon. And you're gonna catch a lot of the same fish, but they're gonna eat this a little bit better if the water's clearer than the spinnerbait. Then you have the old war eagle buzz toad. This one, this bait right here kind of splits it. Pre-spawn to early spawning, spawn to post-spawn. I'm gonna pick this up and just cover water. A lot of times when these fish get done spawning, they're going to eat and they're going to get really, really aggressive. They're garden fry, things mm -hmm. like that. So I can pick this up, take off, and this bait is going to lead us into the post spawn. Okay, before we go there, color, you've got black gold. Mm -hmm. Why not white in that time frame? Why black? White makes sense because, you know, there's a lot of shad. You got shad spawn going on and stuff like that. But experience from me fishing black just it just does the job. Big okay. ones, I mean, it's a, it's not so much a feeding bite when they come off the bed, it's more of a reaction. You know, they're swimming around, they've had a hard couple of weeks, and it's not hard to make them mad, and this bait right here will make them bat, mad and make them bite. Perfect. So now, a lot of these fish are spawning, they're coming off. If you can be the guy to find these fish when they first move out, because the first fish to spawn are your biggest fish, mo more than likely in the lake, and then they're all going to move out deep and they're going to group up. Um, even at 70 degrees, 68 degree water temperature, your schools won't be as big, but your schools of five to 10 fish are all going to be this long. And that's where, you know, the BD7, I'm just going to get out there on some of those ledges, crank it, and catch fish. Out of those schools of five or 10, you're gonna catch three or four on this. Mm -hmm. This is my cleanup bait. You know, I'll put this on a big jig head, you know, a Texas rig, and just throw it, be able to clean up that ledge what the BD7 doesn't catch. Always a shad profile? Pretty much. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, and then you got bonehead for a bonehead. Uh, <laughs> you know, these three baits, you know, these first two here, cover water. This is another bait that I can just take off covering water. Um, you know, be able to get these fish garden fry is the mm -hmm. key. A lot of okay. these fish are gonna move out there. 
uh, you know, on these points and stuff like that, be garden fried. This makes them mad. So that's the one knocker spook. Obviously, we have several options in the spook line. Why that one knocker? Man, I'm a, I'm a one knocker fan. You know, all the way from the rattle bait. Uh, I just like that low pitch. Um, it just seems like it gets their attention. I can call. I feel like I can call them from a lot deeper water okay. than I can. That. Okay. That's just personal preference. So a lot okay. of guys love, you know, the one that has a lot of BBs in it. Okay. Um, mobster swim jig. What happens when this in this water temperature is you have a lot of things that's starting to grow. Grass, lily pads are starting to come up that this bait won't go through. Um, so this bait, you know, I can reel it down a log, grass, anything like that down the side of a dock. Now, the colors, mm -hmm. you know, I have green pumpkin here, a white, you know, shad spawn okay. also. So a white would be a good choice if you, okay. if you start seeing shad so spawn. So if you're around perch, maybe that's what you're going to pick up, mm -hmm. shad spawn, then maybe the white, something like the cleaner. What about trailer choice on that one? I don't want to skip that. You've got a 3.25 inch craw chunk right mm -hmm. there. Is that your top choice? It probably is because the water's starting to warm. I want to move mm -hmm. the bait fast. If I, if you know, if there's some reason I want to slow it down or just create a different profile, say, you know, if I if I'm around a shad spawn, then I would go to like a small pulse or okay. something like that. You know, you know, just to give it more inline swim. But okay. really, both of them are great choices. Okay. You know, the last bait, but not least, I mean, this one could very easily be in the top five is the Christy Critter, green pumpkin, purple. I've caught a lot of fish um, on this. This is. Probably my number one flipping bait after the spawn. I like a jig before the spawn, and once these fish start spawning, you know, we switch to plastic, Texas rig. It's just something about it. You get more bites. I get more bites on plastics after the spawn than I do a jig. You've proven that. I love that bait. Okay. What yeah. about weight? What about weight on this one? What Typ weight are you flipping? Typically, three eighths would be all around. Um, if I'm on a lake that's really clear, you know, maybe the bushes are really deep, I'm going to go to a half. Okay. You just really can't go wrong with that bait. I mean, all the appendages and stuff, they do the work for Texas you. Texas rig, peg or no peg? Always peg. Always peg. Yeah, you, if I flip my bait over the limb, I want my weight to stay in contact with the bait. So I always peg the bait. Okay, all right, excellent. Guys, Jason just broke down the top 10 late spring baits. These are his top 10 choices. If you want to see all of the colors, not only these, but all of the colors that are available, check it out at LureNet.com.